I'm Trip Clark, and this is Mr. Tom Lang, and this is Open Throttle 360. Open Throttle 360 presented by Millerstown Pick Apart. Used parts for less. Great parts, great selection. For more information, visit pickapartyard.com. Welcome to another episode of Open Throttle 360. We're on a return visit to Fowler Automotive Street and Track where some of the cars from the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix are being maintained. Yep, saw a lot of them out there. Uh, car, cars that Dan put on the track. I see a few of them in there now. and. Uh, See a few cars that we didn't see last time we were up here. Dan was gracious enough to invite us back for an encore presentation, and I guess we didn't trash the place too bad last time we were here. Not much. Now how about that stretch that we pulled up in? You like me uh, opening the door for you and you sitting in the back, huh? Well, I'm not used to sitting in the back other than maybe a police car. Yeah, not a limo though? No. No. Well, another thing we got a chance to do not too long ago is uh, made a trip to Newcastle. Tell us about that. Yeah, I went to the back to the 50s car cruise at Cascade Park. Entirely different kind of motorsport event from the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. But still a great time. When you think of things that are as American as apple pie, you think of hot dogs, baseball, and of course, the great American car cruise. Maybe not in that order. Earlier this summer, Open Throttle 360 headed north of Pittsburgh to Newcastle, PA for the annual Back to the 50s Car Cruise hosted by Newcastle native and legendary rod builder Chuck Lombardo. Once a year, Chuck takes a break from building cars for legendary rockers such as Tom Petty and ZZ Top from his shop in Anaheim, California to assemble some friends, nostalgia, some good conversation, oh, and some really nice cars in its tranquil spot known as Cascade Park. Car cruisers are a passionate and dedicated group of folks, and if you don't speak gearhead, you'll certainly get your fill here. 55 Chevy with a 383 stroker. 383 stroker. Four speed transmission, eight and three quarter price rear end. Mustang front end. 350 turbo tranny. NOS. Camaro rear end in it. We drive it all the time, go to all kinds of car shows. But car cruises are more than just talk about cubic inches and differentials. They're about doing things as a family and some occasional tall storytelling. Uh, the thing I like most is camaraderie. You know, having fun with friends, sit around, bench race, you know, tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of that going on, a little bit of lie going on, yeah. Tell them how fast it is when it's not. <laughs> They're about finding ways to celebrate your heroes, and sometimes your clients. I am James Harrison's agent, and I was there the day he ran the touchdown down. They're about hitting the open road and picking up chicks, or... Maybe not. You get a lot of chicks trying to pick you up in that car? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, my wife is usually with me, so... They're about taking time to reflect on a simpler time. And maybe a time when you could take your sweetheart out for a burger and a shake. When we were younger, uh, they had what they called Morgan's uh, Restaurant up here, and then down in the Pittsburgh area, they had the big boys. And it took me probably about four years to find all the goodies on the tray to put it together. And I think this gives it a nice touch to the older people uh, when they come to the car show to see that. And maybe more importantly, Car cruises are about being with your soulmate of 60 years and taking a little time to enjoy yourselves. My favorite uh, memory of owning this car is going to car shows because uh, we go to eat, go out to eat and she don't have to cook. <laughs> But what the boys of Open Throttle 360 found out is that car cruises are really about friendship. 
about building a bond, about spending time with friends, and about reliving all of your wonderful memories and creating new ones. Thanks for that, man. That, uh, the horn works, apparently. You know what didn't work? What's that? That drivel you wrote about the car cruise in Newcastle. Drivel? Yeah, you mean you... about apple pie and loving your country? Apparently, I love mine a little more than you love yours, huh? Would you steal that off the back of a greeting card? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was pretty good, actually. All right, mister, I know everything about cars. Um, what's up with the tape on the headlights of the Porsche? Well, they do that on a race car in case one of the headlights gets broken, the glass won't fall on the track. They didn't just forget to take it off when it left the factory? No, safety no. feature. What about non-breakable glass? How about duct tape is cheaper? It's a good call, actually. All right, you know a little bit. Sounds every man loves to hear. Ooh, nice hair. Text Super PGH to 667-788 for special offers from Supercuts. If you're looking for parts for your car, truck, or van, you gotta come to Millerstown Pick Apart. We have the area's best selection of parts and we let you pick it yourself. We offer the lowest prices around. Or if you'd prefer, we'll find the part for you. Millerstown Pick Apart. Parts for newer cars, classic cars, foreign cars, trucks, and vans. Located in Tarana, Millerstown Pick Apart is right up Route 28 from downtown Pittsburgh. Millerstown Pick Apart, 724-224-4777 or online at pickapartyard.com. Welcome back. Uh, we're talking with Dan Fowler. Uh, Dan, you had a whole lot of cars out at Pit Race for the first weekend of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. You had a whole year to get those ready. Now you got a week to get ready for Shenley Park. Correct. Uh, the high horsepower cars and the fast cars run out at uh, Pit Race. Uh, we had 11 cars there. Only lost one and I was real thrilled with the success. Everybody drove every lap. Uh, seven of those cars race both events and the deal in between is when we only have like three days plus the car shows in between it's tough uh we have to sometimes uh, go over the car we need a part we get the part in and boom uh, back to run the following weekend in chenley well how many of these cars around us now are going to be at chenley park uh we got uh i think i'm gonna have seven cars over there the mg uh the porsche the 911 the Porsche 911 SC, uh, MGB, uh, Triumph Spitfire, Formula V. It's a little crazy, but you know, it's a lot of work, but uh, we enjoy it. Uh, that Porsche over there, is that the one Tripp and I put the engine in? Yep, you guys did a good job putting the motor in. It's been running fine, and you'll see it this weekend. My chest swells with pride. <laughs> uh, a lot of challenge in getting all these cars ready? Uh, absolutely. I don't sleep too much and do a lot of night racing, as I call it. So what kind of reward is in this for you? If everybody is safe, uh, cars look good, they perform correctly, and everybody finishes. Uh, it's not always about the checkered flag or the winning. The checkered flag actually means finishing, but as long as everybody has a good time and they're safe. So after this is all said and done, what's next for you? 
From Quincy Disney World. Oh, who all's going there? The whole family, nine of us. Well, that'll be a well-deserved vacation. Recently, Open Throttle 360 had a chance to talk to a driver that competes in a completely different form of motorsports. Let's talk to Travis Creech. Hey fans, I'm sure you remember our coverage of the Jack Frost Enduro at Mercer. This is one of the stars of that coverage, Travis Creech. Okay, you weren't a star then, but you're turning into one now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Got a good car. Well, you got two wins in your last two races. Yeah. Now, my source here at Sharon Speedway tells me that lately you've been running up front, but once you get to about second spot, you have trouble not wanting to run the guy in front of you off the track. I remember from the Jack Frost coverage, you kept talking about maintain, maintain, maintain. You gotta maintain mostly. The trick to winning is probably maintain. Try to maintain. Would that go out the window or what? It's hard for me to run second. I wanna, I wanna win. I gotta just, I drive it so hard. I overdrive it most of the time. There's been about three races that I should have won before my first win, but I overdrive the car. But I'm, I'm getting better. The last two nights, obviously, I've gotten a lot better with keeping the car on the track, not washing up to the wall. Yeah. It's, it's hard, I'm still learning it, but I'm doing pretty good, I guess. Now, there's an old adage in racing, slow down, you'll get there faster. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So you've been learning that, huh? Yeah, yeah, learning it the hard way. Now, this isn't the car you were running in the Enduro. No, no, not at all. But this car has a winning pedigree behind it. Yeah, this car used to belong to Mike Sharp, but 2010, he won 12 features, and he won a championship with it, and then Guy at Mays bought it, had it for a year, planned on racing it, never did, so he gave me a killer deal on it, I bought it. And it's still fast as it was in 2010. Do you still have the Enduro car? You're gonna mess around with that? Oh yeah, bit? I still have the Enduro car. It's in the process of getting a fuel cell and race seat put in it to be a backup car for out here. Wow, you're getting big time, man. Backup <laughs> car and Yeah, everything. definitely gotta have a backup. Well, I'm third in points. I don't want this car to blow up or something and be done for the year. Now, you've only run four Enduros, and this is your eighth race in this car. Yeah, tonight will be the eighth race in this car. So you don't have a whole lot of experience, but two wins under your belt. I know guys who race 10 years don't have two wins. Well, I keep hearing, a lot of people keep saying that. Uh, I guess I'm just a natural. I've been watching racing, been coming to this track since I was, I don't even remember the first time. I was probably three years old, first time I came here. Has anybody helped you with learning how to race this kind of car? Not really so much learning how to drive it. I mean, I, I, nobody's really, help me at all with driving it, but working on it, setups, and doing a lot of stuff, yeah, so I've had a lot of help. So where are you gonna go from here? Keep on racing this, and hopefully somebody will maybe put me in a tube and a lead mod or something next year, who knows? Just keep stepping up one class at a time. Hopefully, yeah. Well, Travis, uh, nice to see that you've got some success under your Thank belt, you. and glad to see the racing's been good to you. I hope you're just as good to racing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We saw Travis at the Jack Frost 150 at Mercer in January. He certainly has come a long way in his racing career. Another young up and coming driver is Russell Baird, drives in the Sweeney Rush Crate Late Model Series. We saw him at Roaring Knob, which is his home track. We're at Roaring Knob Motorsports Complex for the Rush Late Model Race. With me now is Russell Baird. Uh, Russell, former stock car racer, moved up into the Crate Late Models. How did you get into stock car racing? I actually got into stock car racing because whenever I was 14 years old, my dad asked me if we wanted, if he wanted to build a race car with me, and I said sure, and it just snowballed from there. So you started out here at Roaring Knob? Yes, I started here at Roaring Knob. How did you do in the stock cars? I did pretty good, consistently top five finishes. What made you want to move up into the late models? Whenever we heard that there was a crate series coming out, we decided to move up because we figured we could actually afford to run a late model since we could afford a crate motor. If it had not been for the Rush Crate Series, you're not going to get into a super late model. No, I would not. I'd be in a street stock at best if it wasn't for the Rush Series. How do you like driving the Crate Late Model? It's more fun than street stocks and anything else like that. These, these cars are an animal. They just, they handle so much better, so much differently. They're, it's undescribable. Now you had a certain amount of success in the stocks. What kind of success have you seen in the Crate Lates? 
my first season we didn't do too hot but ever since then we've been moving up and i've been top five again we got one of the fastest cars up at this track usually what's the level of competition like in the rush late model series there's always 10 15 cars consistently vying for the first position they all there's 10 cars that can always win every race minimum usually there's everybody got a chance to win it all right so you're not going to get out horsepower so there's two things left it's the driver and the setup of the car which is the most important both can't have one and not the other i mean do you feel you have more strength in one than the other i feel like i'm a competent driver but the setup definitely helps out i mean i wouldn't be able to do it without having the car set up the way it is who helped you get the car set up properly my dad russell baird senior helped me set up the car and vince massey also so after you go out for hot laps you always make changes before the feature who makes those calls my dad and i discuss it and we uh decide what we're going to do and then we just pick whatever we're going to do to fix it how often has that decision been right and how often has it been wrong we're usually pretty close with what we choose to do but every once in a while we've had some decisions go wrong for us well that happens to everybody yeah. there's a lot of choices on these late models suspension wise and whatnot and that just gives you that many more choices to make a mistake yeah other than racing here at roaring knob are you going to hit some of the touring shows whenever i'm done with college at cal u for the summer i will we are going to try to tour more than right now we're going to try to go to sharon mckean all of them well we want to wish you a lot of luck tonight and later in the season i uh, hope everything works out the way you want it to thank you this is Tom Lang reporting for Open Throttle 360. Devour the elements with Rain Eater All Season Wiper Blades. Experience the distinct performance advantages of our full line of aerodynamic frameless and full feature traditional wiper blades. Proven quality and patented innovations continue to build our distinct brand and exceed customers' expectations. Low profile design, clean, quiet wiper action, and all in one adapter. Rain Eater Wiper Blades, the best wiper blade in the world. Best tires, parts, and service. Tire Town. Unless you're actually racing in the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, most of us don't get a chance to go around the Shenley track at the speeds that they do. We were able to do that recently with the help of the Zappa Race Team.
There sure are a lot of turns in that racetrack. Recently, we talked to a driver that can only make the turn after she takes her foot off the throttle. So we're cruising through the pits at Pittsburgh Raceway Park. Come across, kind of a neat looking car and a very good looking driver. <laughs> With us now is Kathy Gallo. Uh, Kathy, thanks for taking the time to talk Tom. to us. Thanks, Tom. Tell us just a little bit about your car, what it is and uh, what kind of racing you're involved in. Okay. It's a 96 Old, Cut Old Cutlass, uh, 572 cubic inch engine, and we run top sportsman. Now, do you race here on a regular basis? Uh, typically here on a regular basis and try to catch the pro-ams. How did you get involved in drag racing? That's my husband's fault. <laughs> uh, my husband was drag race for a lot of years, got out of it for a while, and then got back into it by helping a friend build a car and wanted to get back into it himself. And he said, I assumed, I assumed that he would drive, but he said, I want you to give it a shot. So. Uh, here we are. Now, now I won't let him in the car. So. <laughs> is this the first race car you've driven, this old Yes, Google? yes. Did you have any trepidation about getting in something this fast? Uh, I don't think I knew enough. The first time, actually, I thought it would feel a little faster the first time. We, uh, we, we actually came out in a, um, we worked at a local automotive uh, dealers, automobile dealership and actually came out in a GTO and ran street for the first time, just, just a couple passes down the road and I can't remember what we ran, but I, I thought that would be a little faster because we also ride snowmobiles and the acceleration on the snowmobile is actually a little more than that, that particular car. So then Ori uh, put me right in the old set next. Now, you, I think you said you won't let him in the car. Has he ever had the chance well, to drive it? I kind of say that kiddingly. He does drive it. He doesn't drive it that often, but sometimes in the beginning of the season, he'll take a couple passes in it, but primarily I'm in the car. I always tell him though, if he wants to drive, it's just too fun. I don't know why he doesn't want to drive, but he says, nope, I'm the driver, so. Is is he any faster in the car than you are? No. <laughs> Same setup, so actually I'm probably a little faster. I've got a little bit of weight advantage. <laughs> Tell us just a little bit about the relationship between you and Ori as your, you know, what's his job and what's your job as far as once you're down in the lanes getting ready to race? Um, well, once we're down the lanes ready to race, I always, I always check the tire pressure. And uh, it's really once we're in the lanes, there's not a whole lot. We kind of decide on the dial together. Uh, we look at the data and we stress over that and for a while, and then we decide pick a dial. And then essentially, um, we're in the car, and he just he'll push me down till it's time to start it, and uh, he'll bring me into the lights, and then that's it. Is he nervous standing on the starting line watching you race something this fast? I, I think he is. He doesn't say a whole lot, but I think he is a little bit. Uh, he always said it's harder to be outside the car than inside the car, and I, and I feel the same when he's in the car. Uh, I'd rather be in the car. <laughs> Well, something I've noticed from being a crew member, once the car leaves the starting line, all the people in the stands, they're watching the crew people. They're not watching the driver, driver. anymore because they're gone. <laughs> they're gone, yeah. So maybe that's why he doesn't want to get in the car. He wants to show off a little bit. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> now, do you see your racing career progressing anywhere from here? You want to get in something faster? Maybe a pro mod car? Uh, at this point, with us running consistently at this track, I think we're probably going fast enough for this track. We've got the ability to step it up a little bit if we put the two fours on it. We could probably, in good weather, we could probably be, you know, low, you know, seven, run a 740, maybe. What do you like most about the sport of drag racing? I like the competition and just the, uh, I guess, always trying to do better. And I'm kicking myself today because that last run wasn't a very good light, but <laughs> I'm hoping I can uh, turn that around. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us, and good luck in your future racing endeavors. Uh, thanks, Tom. This is Tom Lang reporting for Open Throttle 360. If you're looking for parts for your car, truck, or van, you got to come to Millerstown Pick Apart. We have the area's best selection of parts and we let you pick it yourself. We offer the lowest prices around, or if you'd prefer, we'll find the part for you. Millerstown Pick Apart. Parts for newer cars, classic cars, foreign cars, trucks, and vans. Located in Tarana, Millerstown Pick Apart is right up Route 28 from downtown Pittsburgh. Millerstown Pick Apart, 724-224-4777 or online at pickapartyard.com. Feel the rush and witness some of the region's most exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing action as the Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC Rush Dirt Late Model Series races to a speedway near you. Witness some of the nation's finest up-and-coming young drivers battle each other all summer long. Pittsburgh, Sharon, McKean County, The Rock, Roaring Knob, Allegheny Mountain, and Bradford Speedway. Bring the family and introduce your kids to our phenomenal group of racers. It's a new generation full of new young heroes. Check us out at RushRacingSeries.com and feel the rush.
I know you're used to seeing better GoPro footage than this. So unless you want to see more of this junk, you need to go to OpenThrottle360.com and follow the link to upload your footage. Let's go pro now! I don't know about you, but I need a shop vac to wipe up all the sweat from pushing you on that creeper. Well, it was a lot more work for you than it was oh, for me. Oh my lord. It's no fun pushing you around on that thing. It's kind of creepy too. It was a little scary. A little scary. Hey, uh, we want to thank Dan Fowler of Fowler Automotive Street and Track. Yep, Dan let us set up shop one more time, come back for a little encore performance, and of course we're grateful for that. And uh, tell the folks what we have coming up in our next show. Special edition dedicated to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix all 10 days, two weekends of racing, and all the social events in between. Hard to imagine how we're gonna pack all the activities from the Vintage Grand Prix into one half hour show. Our crew can do it. Our crew can do it. As always, uh, thanks for watching, and like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, and if you have any comments or suggestions for us, make sure you send us an email to info at openthrottle360.com. See you next time.